Hey, this is driver 88. And um, if you don't know, I lost my license for a year. And um, I'm climbing back out of hiding because we have a new daily on the channel. And um, it's an Audi RS3. It's an 8Y. I used to own one for three years, the 8V. So we're gonna talk about it today. I'm going to go through all the reasons why I bought another RS3 after having the previous 8V for three years and you probably noticed there's also an M4X drive on the channel and these two are sort of going to compete a little bit once we modify them but today I'm going to go through all the small things all the reasons all the benefits uh, the things that are better with the 8Y that you might not have thought of other than the torque splitter and the more aggressive aero for reasons why you might want to buy the 8Y even if you used to own an 8V. So I used to have a white 8V RS3. I bought it in 2017. I was one of the pretty early, uh, I guess, adopters of the model and I had it for three years and 55,000 kilometers. I absolutely loved that car. And since then it's become a bit of a cult tuner car instead of something you kind of drive up amazing roads like this. Uh, but this one I picked up just recently and believe it or not, even though it only has a thousand miles or so on it, it was actually the cheapest in the country because lots of people are still, I guess, trying to flip these for overs because there's limited RS3s everywhere. Uh, it's very, very hard to order one now. They're not even on the website anymore, but they may come back. So why buy a very similar, to, similar car to what I used to have in the past? Well, firstly, this car comes with a five-year warranty, whereas the previous car came with a three. So it's a 66.6% .6 more time you have under warranty, even though, as we all know, the vast majority of people are not going to keep their warranty because they're going to be tuning the hell out of these things. Having said that, though, my beloved brand, Audi, I saw recently on the JD Power results, that is the reliability results over the last three years it came second last out of like 30 different brands so a five-year warranty could be something that could be quite enticing for you so another reason of course is this 8y just looks that much more aggressive than the 8v it's quite subtle but these wheels are so much more aggressive they're also a wider 265 up front my old 3rs porsche gt3 rs used to have 265 tread up front so enormous grip up front these wider arches just remind me of some of my favorite Audi, Audis of the history. The B5 RS4 kind of is giving off even though it's a sedan. And this is in Tango Red. I used to have an S3 in Masano Red. This one's, I guess, a bit more primary. And I just love how it's muscular. The DRLs do all sorts of fancy things and look kind of cool. And yeah, I just love the look of this thing. Never say that people in Honda Civics aren't nice because that gentleman who was just enjoying some uh, hill climbing himself just pulled over to check if we we're all right in case we were broken down or anything, which we are at an Audi, so it's quite possible. But um, yeah, what a nice guy. Car community is uh, in a good place. Now, when you've owned a car for a few years, you do notice lots of little changes. And there are lots of small things that I love about this car. One that's small, but I think is kind of significant because you feel it every day, is this new key. Uh, the key that I got in 2017 felt old already then, and this one is just slimmer, nicer, it feels sturdier, and yeah, just nicer to the touch. Little things, right? Speaking of things that you touch, there's um, really cheap paddles on a lot of VAG products, and finally, I guess, Audi listened to their customers and found that these paddles, which are now aluminum or aluminium, uh, they just feel more expensive and nicer to actuate. Also, we now have a perforated leather steering wheel instead of an Alcantara one, and it's round. Lots of people sort of say, why have a flat bottom steering wheel, which I used to really like aesthetically. Sure, this isn't a race car, but I would prefer a flat bottom steering wheel just for aesthetic purposes. On top of that, we've got this piano black in the center here. Not sure why. This is an area where you're going to be touching and scratching things all the time, so I have no idea why that, that is there. I do love this screen though. It sits towards you more than the old uh, 8V screen. Easy to access, it's relatively quick and all that sort of stuff. And I do like the little bits of carbon 
on the inside and all the carbon on the outside. This car didn't come with a sunroof. I guess I would have preferred one, but I don't use it that much. I do really like the carbon pack on the exterior though. The only thing that I didn't like from my 8V RS3 was the seats. You kind of sat on top of them, they're a little bit hard, and they didn't offer much side bolstering. Now these seats, I can't tell, I'm happy to be, happy to be corrected, but these feel like they're a little bit different than my old car, like a little bit softer, more comfortable, but with better side bolstering. Um, so it just tick, 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 just love it, absolutely. Love the interior of this new RS3. I've come to this otherworldly uh, misty abyss to tell you that the car is not as loud, it doesn't sound as good as it used to, but that can be fixed. Um, I guess once tunes come out and we can uh, maybe change, change the downpipe or so. The other thing that I can't stand about this goddamn car is this My Audi app thing. So basically, you know, the powers that be tell me I need to sign in and be some sort of person that signs into my car and then anytime i want to connect to say my gopro or my other cams or our other camera gear my audi comes up and says do you want to sign into my audi no i don't it's very very frustrating so how does the 8y drive against the 8v well in my experience so far over about 500 kilometers it feels very similar if not a little bit more grip up front than the last car if you really push it you can have a little bit of fun and it responds so much better in hard quartering. I've noticed a couple of people on the forums who have owned both cars have actually compared lap times and they've found that the torque splitter is reducing seconds off their lap times in certain cases, which is quite incredible. If you don't know, uh, the 8Y's ECU is not cracked yet, so essentially it has a metaphorical condom uh, on the front of it. So, even though we have a few mods coming, we've got springs coming, we've got an intercooler, we've got an intake, we've got an inlet uh, elbow and a PCM unit, we're not gonna get the maximum power out of it uh, with, until those tunes drop. I'm not sure how long that will take. So next time you see this lovely RS3, we'll do a 5,000 kilometer review. It'll have a bunch of bits on it. Maybe we'll take it to the dyno and the drags, have it up against uh, the M4X drive, otherwise, You've been watching Driver 88, we'll see you next time.